Hello, welcome to this short video on learning outcomes from the MSc in Medical Education at the Swansea University Medical School. In it, we're going to describe some simple tips and tricks for writing good learning outcomes as a way of planning and organizing your teaching. The best place to start is probably by defining what a learning outcome is. It's a simple statement of what learners will be able to do once they have completed their learning. The two key letters within that definition are these two. If you keep in mind what it is that you want learners to be able to do by the end of their learning, then you're going to be in good shape when you're planning any learning and teaching activity. Let me give you an example of how this translates into good and bad learning outcomes. Let's take this video as an example. What I want you to be able to do, really, is to know what learning outcomes are, to be able to understand learning outcomes. Problem is, it's very difficult for me to know what it is that you know. That action verb there, know, is a very difficult thing to observe, and that makes this bad learning outcome. One way we might improve it is to change that action verb. Here we've changed it to, to write measurable learning outcomes. If this is what I want you to be able to do by the end of the video, then this is something that I can observe and that you can observe and get feedback on. That makes this a much better learning outcome for this video. All we've done is change the action verb from to know to to write. There are lots of different action verbs that can be used in learning outcomes that make them specific and measurable and observable. And here are just some examples to explain, to list, to appraise and so on. You might see these verbs organized into hierarchies or into pyramids. I wouldn't worry too much about that. There's not a huge amount of evidence to support a hierarchical arrangement of verbs. But there is some good evidence to show that if you make your learning outcomes specific and measurable using these verbs, then the students are going to do better. Let's build upon that a bit more. Here's an acronym that's helpful when trying to organize and write your learning outcomes. It's called the SMARTY acronym. The S stands for specific. What do you want your learners to be able to do? Who are the learners that you want to do it? The M stands for measurable. How much improvement or increase in learning are you going to be looking for? The A is achievable. Can the learners achieve this learning outcome given the resources available to them and the time that you've made available for them to do it? The R is relevant. Is the learning outcome aligned with the discipline for the students? Is it aligned with the assessment that you want to measure the learning outcome by? We'll come back to that in a second. Is the learning outcome time bound? Does it specifically say by when you want the learning to be achieved? I stands for inclusive. If you apply the principles of universal design to the writing of your learning outcome and the activities that flow from it, then you're going to be in good shape. If you start having to write separate learning outcomes for students with certain characteristics, then the learning outcome has become exclusive and you're not always measuring the same thing. E is for evidence. It helps to make your learners aware what the learning outcome is. Don't just put it in a handbook or in some other dusty dry document. Put it up front at the beginning of a teaching activity and say, this is what I want you to be able to do by this point. Of these elements of the SMARTY acronym, the two most important are probably specific and measurable. Let me show you some more examples of what that means and how that allows us to plan then the learning and teaching activities and the assessments that flow from a learning outcome. The principle of this then is to align those three things, the teaching, the outcome and the assessment. Let's take an, uh, a learning outcome. We want people to understand local anesthetics. Hopefully by now you realize this is not a good learning outcome because it's very difficult for us to understand what somebody else understands. To understand something is not really a measurable action verb. These two verbs, to know and to understand, that we've used as examples, these are really where the whole idea of learning outcomes came from back in the 1950s frustration with the use of these terms that are not very specific and not very measurable. Let's change it into something that is a bit more specific and measurable to identify effective doses of local anesthetics. This is something we can observe and this makes it a better learning outcome. What this good learning outcome now allows us to do then is to identify the assessment and the teaching activities that flow from it. Identify effective doses of local anesthetics might be something we would measure using a multiple choice exam. It's a factual recall type learning outcome. This then means that it might be a learning outcome that's suited to teaching and learning using lectures and independent study using textbooks and other resources. Having identified then 
the learning outcome, the assessment, and the teaching activity, we can see that they're all now aligned. This alignment comes in part from having written a good learning outcome to start with. The rest of it flows. Another important point about learning outcomes is to make sure that they move with your learner. If we're graduating junior doctors or pharmacists or nurses or some other health professional, it's not sufficient for us to be able to say that they can identify effective doses of local anesthetics. We often want them to administer effective doses of local anesthetics. Having written a new learning outcome for this later phase of learning, we can now see a natural flow to the type of assessment we might use. We might, instead of using a multiple choice test, this is something we would assess using a clinical exam like an OSCE or a workplace-based assessment. Having identified the assessment, we can see a logical fit for the types of teaching we might do. Small group clinical skills teaching now being far better suited to this updated outcome than lectures or independent study. Again, the outcome is aligned with the assessment and the learning and teaching activity. This principle is known as constructive alignment and was written about by John Biggs back in 1996. It's part of trying to plan and teach learning activities is to make sure that your outcome is aligned with your assessment and that helps identify the teaching and learning activities that fit in between. In summary then, two key tips and tricks for writing a good learning outcome. The first and probably the most important is to focus on what it is you want learners to be able to do. I can't emphasize that enough. Some additional quality enhancement measures for writing learning outcomes, apply the SMARTY acronym. In particular, make your learning outcomes specific and measurable and available to all by being inclusive. If you've got those, you're in good shape and so are your students. All right, see you in the next video.